Y'all come go with me into the garden. I'm not dressed like I normally usually would be, but I'm not gonna stay out there long. I'm just going to grab some banana peppers because I have a recipe for moolah. Let me pass. I have a recipe for pickled banana peppers and I'm about to show y'all how I'm gonna do it. So I did, I almost came out here without putting some, um, oh, they trying to get me, they trying to get me. I almost came out here without putting some of the, um, mentholatum on, but yeah, I grabbed it. So what I'm gonna do is, let me turn this around so you, I'm gonna just cut these off of here first. Ugh. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut these off of here first and then I'll pick them up because I need to be quick about it. <laughs> and I don't want to be out here playing around trying to get some peppers. So I got some that's in the house already. Um, I guess that's it. I don't see any more, so I think that was four. All right, let me grab these. <laughs> Alright, that's it. That's all I needed. Oh, there goes some more. <laughs> I'm not leaving none out here. So, hold on. I'm just trying to be quick. So, get that one. This is my first time making it. I got the recipe today. Any in there? Nope. What's here? Nothing. What's over here? Nothing. Okay, let me grab those then. Okay. Two, three. I could have sworn I cut off four, but I don't see the other one. Alright, it's all good. It's all good. Alright. So, come with me, and I'm about to go in the house and make up some with the peppers that I got in the house. I'm about to go make up some. Um, oh, lucky, let me pass. Pickled banana peppers. Y'all know them as pepper rings. I know that as pepper rings. <laughs> All right, be back. Okay, so before I get started, I want to show you guys my recipe for pickled banana peppers. I found it online and I write like, this is my book full of recipes. Like when I find stuff <laughs> that I want to try. Um, but yeah, so it's supposed to be really easy and I only do the easy stuff and I always try to make sure I have everything that I need. So it calls for white vinegar. So I have the white vinegar. It calls for apple cider vinegar and I'm excited because I made this. <laughs> I made this. Um, I made it September 2023. We're in 2024 so it's good and ready. It has never been used and so I'm going to use it today. I'm going to shake it up first. I'm going to shake it up before I use it. Got the mother and everything in there. But I made this apple cider vinegar. And I have some pineapple vinegar that I've made too. Um, I have two jars that, had, that was made with white sugar. And I have two jars that was made with brown sugar. And right now they're still like processing before I bottle them up. But I got the bottles ready for them. <laughs> I'm excited about it too. Um, what's next? It says sugar. Here's my sugar right here. I'm gonna have to get some more. It says mustard seed. I use this in my hair. Oh, let me share something with you guys too. You see this bottle? That's glass. That's glass. It is crazy. I feel it's crazy that we go and buy stuff and it be in glass jars and then we throw the glass jars away and then when we want to can something, we go and buy canning jars. Like to me, that's crazy. So I have started keeping my jars. So this was some type of pepper. It was probably banana peppers that was in here. I don't know, but it's about to get used. It's 
about to get used for my banana peppers, my pickled banana peppers. Um, what made me start keeping the glass jar, and like y'all, it's a headache. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it'd be a headache to just like wash the jars off. It's just so easy to just throw the jars away. But um, I remember the story found in, I think it's First Kings, I think it was Elijah. Um, it might have been Elisha. I'm going to make sure that I tell that story before this is over with. I just got to go find it first. But um, the woman that, like, her her husband had died, and her it was just her and her boys, and, and they were going to lose the house. And so Elijah asked them, because I think they only had, like, a little bit of oil, enough oil to make, like, one cake. And Elijah was like, you know, well, feed me, and then, you know, your oil or whatever won't run out. And so he told them, he said, use all the jars, grab all the jars, <laughs> grab, I'm, I'm going to tell you my story behind these in a, another time, but he says, he told them, he said, grab all the jars, and when you grab all your jars, fill it with oil, like the oil will continue pouring. And so when she filled all the jars that was in her house, the empty jars that was in her house, she had empty jars in her house, y'all. When she filled all the empty jars in her house, and she told Elijah, Elijah said, okay, we'll go ask your neighbor for their jars. And so she did. She went and asked all of their neighbors. They went and they, they got all the jars they could get. And when they didn't have any more jars, that is when the oil stopped flowing. When there was not enough, I mean, not any more jars to be poured into. So I call myself trying to tell a Bible story about what it really is my story with the jars and why I say the jars. But I had two stories that I intertwined as one. And so I want to tell these stories correctly because they're really interesting. And they really did inspire me to start saving my jars and not like throwing the wealth away. So the first story is... Um, found in 1 Kings chapter 17. It's not a big story, so I'm just going to simply read it to you. It says, Elijah and the widow. Elijah and the widow. It says, then the word of the Lord, this is um, 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse 8. It says, then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commissioned. Now, this is the Lord speaking to Elijah. He says, "See, I have com I have commanded a widow there to provide for you." So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, "Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink." And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die and Elijah said to her do not fear go and do as I have said but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me small cake from it first it says and afterward make some for yourself and your son for thus says the Lord God of Israel the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. So I like that because when she gave, like there, you know, there's the, um, the, uh, what is it? 
the law of the tithe, where when you give to God first or to the man of God, when you give them a 10%, 10 when you, and the 10% is a small, like 10 cents off of a dollar, that's 10%. 10 cents, you get to keep 90 cents and you're giving 10 cents. So when you give the tithe to the Lord, the rest is blessed. When you get that first pipe, that first little portion blessed, everything thereafter was blessed. So that story was good. And so, so that was the first one about how it didn't run dry. But the story that I was thinking of, because remember I said Elijah, that was Elijah, Elijah. But the story that I was thinking of, that I was sharing about the glass jars and the oil not stopping the pour until the glass jars was like you couldn't get any more vessels to pour it in. That wasn't Elijah. That was Elisha. <laughs> Elisha is the one who um, caught the anointing of Elijah. And I'm not going to tell that story. I'm just going to read the part about Elisha and the widow's oil. So let me turn this around because I would like for you to see it. Okay, so it is 2 Kings chapter 4, and it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. I'm going to read that part again. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. It said, I paused. I had to pause on that. I had to pause on that because of what I had read and studied in the book of Deuteronomy and uh, about the slaves and how sometimes people become slaves because they have to pay off debts and I did this whole study on it and I was equating it how it applied today to those who are going out getting jobs so that they could pay debts and so anyway anyway let's keep going it says um, the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves so Elisha said to her what shall I do for you tell me what do you have in the house and she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. Did you see that? From everywhere. From all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her sons, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there's not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came to and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. How about that? So as long as, and then he was, they were told to go and grab vessels from everywhere, everywhere. Like, ask everybody. Get these empty vessels and go. And when you get them, shut the door behind you and fill them. That was cool. I thought that was cool. And as long as they had empty vessels, the oil continued to pour. But once they didn't have any more empty vessels, then the oil stopped. Like that, that, that speaks to me on so many different levels. As a matter of fact, let's get back to the original vessel, the original vessel, the original video, so I can share with you how that story has inspired me on so many different levels. Bye. Now, while that has inspired me to like save my jars and use my jars. I leave the good jars. I leave the expensive jars. I leave the canning jars for my husband to do whatever he does. And I save these jars and I use them again. Even these little ones, y'all, I save them and I will use them again. And so um, 
that story inspired me, but even prior to that story inspiring me, what also inspires me is this. The oil I know is the Holy Spirit. Let me turn this around. <laughs> I'm so, look, look, my phone didn't always used to do that where I could flip it on me. <laughs> but um, one of the things that inspires me um, with that story is that I know that the empty vessels it's not just the glass jars that I showed you, but the empty vessels can even be us. And the oil that pours out is not just your olive oil or whatever expensive oil you use, but it is the oil of the Holy Spirit. It's that word, y'all. And so as long as there is a vessel that I can encourage you guys, I'm like, the Lord is steady pouring. He is steady filling me up so I could continue pouring out. And I appreciate that more than ever I appreciate that so I do have another like this is going to be uploaded on my I am Jody Lynn that's me it's going to be uploaded on my I am Jody Lynn YouTube page but listen I have another page and that page to find it is called um you can either type in Abba Silence Ministries or you could search the artisans pen the artisans that be me <laughs> um that came from or artisans kind of reminds me of my grandmother who was named Artie right and so um like Harris son artisans like son of Artie or me daughter granddaughter of Artie um another thing about the word artisans is that in the book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 3 God filled he filled different ones full of, or he called them the artisans. They were called the artisans, but they were filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and all sorts of workmanship. And that is what God has been doing with me. My area is writing. So pen, pen does not just mean this ink pen, which I always have pen and paper, but it also means publishing, editing, and narrating. And that's actually what I do. Um, I help people who want to become published authors. I help them to realize their dream. Like, you know, it's easier than many people think. Some people think that they can't do it. Some people think that it's too expensive. And yeah, I help people birth their dreams. So you can call me a midwife too. <laughs> All these different giftings. Thank you, Lord. But anyway, um, anyway, I like that the oil kept pouring as long as there was a vessel to fill into. So um, as long as there's vessels out there to fill into, I'm always going to have something to share. I am just now getting back to sharing to this social media page that I am Jody Lynn social media, social media page. YouTube page, YouTube page, the I am Jody Lynn YouTube page is really a page that is just really low key, you know, it's not preachy. It is um, just me in the garden, me talking about my health um, journey. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a journey, my health journey, because God is walking it with me. Um, it is me sharing things that I do around the house as far as um, recipes that I'll be trying out. I have been sharing all that stuff on social media and I'm gonna now be sharing it on my I am Jody Lynn page, which is where I was supposed to be sharing it anyway. So y'all forgive me, y'all forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I apologize for real because you guys should have been getting it to begin with. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so with that being said, it's time. Let's get into putting together. This is my first time doing it too, by the way. And I'm excited to do this because when I did the beets, the pickled beets, y'all, and my brother-in-law came out and tasted them, y'all. He said it was good. The brand was good and everything, y'all. So that kind of encouraged me to taste my own, y'all. And it was good, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's get started.
right, so I filled this with, I thought it was recording, so you didn't get a chance to see me filling it. It wasn't recording, my bad. Um, but what I had mentioned is that when I rinsed it, because I rinsed these several times to get as much of these little peppers out of there, um, it's still some at the bottom, of some water in here, so you like won't really be able to see the peppers. But it, it um, did pretty good considering that the peppers could not go through the strainer, but the peppers that were coming off of here were sticking to the bottom of the strainer. And as I was dumping it back in here, that's how I was able to dump a lot of it. So I rinsed it at least about two or three times. And I'm just waiting for the brine to come to a rolling boil. It's almost there. But you know you don't watch the pot boil because it won't boil. So I turned it up just a little bit. I had turned it down because I didn't want it to be ready before I was ready for it. And now I'm ready for it and it's not ready. So, yeah. I'm going to wash this lid off a little bit more. And it's almost to a rolling boil. And then all I got to do is fill this up and let it sit. And um, I got to let it sit enough till it cools off. And then once it cools off, then stick it in the refrigerator and let it sit in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks, which when his husband eats it, it will do no problem. He left the door open. <laughs> and yeah, one second. He's going to get deal. <laughs> So he's going to get some dill from the garden because he wants me to put dill in here. Messing with my recipe. <laughs> leaves off of here or don't stick none until I wash it. Just, just, yeah. Don't put nothing in that pot until I wash it. And then once don't you put nothing in there too. Okay. Once you pour it in there, mm -hmm. then just put that in there. Okay. holding the thing over my jaw. He was going to put it down in. I knew he was going to put it down in there. But I had to wash this stuff. Like, I have to wash. Like, this needs to be washed again. Like, I for real don't like bugs. I for real do not like bugs. There's something on that leaf right there. Let me stick that right there. messing with my recipe y'all now I ain't even gonna know how my recipe gonna turn out <laughs> because he's adding stuff to my recipe y'all but because he asked I'm gonna do it I'm just right now checking all these leaves for bugs that needs to be washed again okay so here's why I check is so much or I'm checking it like this for bugs. Number one is backyard full of bugs, homegrown full of bugs. <laughs> uh, number two is we have geckos and geckos poop too and they be all over the stuff that be growing. So, you know, you have to wash this stuff like really good. You really need to wash this stuff really good. So yeah, I'm really funny about it. I don't 
This one is good. Okay, I checked that one. Yeah, you got to you have to wash this stuff really good. Okay, but anybody say you got to wash it really good. I could tell y'all one thing. If I'm making it, it will be bug free. <laughs> It will be bug free. Okay. This is good. These are good. Okay. Almost done. Almost done inspecting these. Mm -mm. This got some, some stuff on it. Let's see. Just wash that. Just wash that whole thing. See that little, it's on my fingertip. That's what I'm finding on here. And that's why I'm setting them to the side. Because I'm gonna rinse them off really, really, really good to make sure that none of that is going in. Because I promise y'all, I won't eat it. <laughs> So this one looks kind of good. Okay, those are good. These need to be washed. That one's good. I'm just gonna sit that to the side right now. Here's your brine. I'm gonna use the Almost done. Okay. So this is the brine. One second. Okay, this is the type of funnel that enables you to pour in a, and it doesn't fit. <laughs> it don't fit. That's okay. So, I don't want to use this one. I'm just going to use this. here and I'm going to pour this into the jar Some of the stuff, the goody goody stuff is at the bottom. So what I'm about to do. I'm about to get a spoon and grab some of these seeds and put them all in here.
You see those mustard seeds? Get them down up in there. I should use a strainer. Try to get that a minute to settle soon. Okay. And now that it's settled, I can scoop them better. Get all that in there. Get back in that jar. Okay, so now let me put the stuff that my husband told me to put in. you put the lid on it it's gonna infuse the oil that's in the in the dill and it'll be awesome it'll have that picklish flavor to it I like it that's why I grew it um, and your parsley is ready to This will be his jar. <laughs> I'm ready. This will be his jar. And the reason why is because I have a recipe that I want. I would, wanted to try this recipe, and this recipe did not call for the. Uh, deal so this will be his job so I would like to see how the recipe how it tastes so he eats more of the stuff than I do anyway these like whenever I'm eating
The reason I took the lid off is because I'm gonna wipe it on the top so it doesn't get stuck. Okay. Is it done? 